Church, will you join me in welcoming the whole wide world to big time Burleson, Texas? Let's do it. Boom. Hello, planet Earth. We bless you guys and call you guys blessed. Hello, my friends. God bless you, haters. And, and I just call you all blessed. Guys, welcome, welcome. Guys, today I'm going to be delivering the preliminary of the prophetic for the new Hebrew year 5780 and going to be stepping off into that. We're going to be unpacking this for an entire year, but I'm super, super, super excited about this. Um, more than 20 years ago, the Lord told me, Troy, I want you to start seeking me concerning a prophetic word for the year to come. And I only knew to do that according to the Gregorian calendar that back then. I'm not against the Gregorian calendar. I love the Gregorian calendar. Uh, but I have since learned about the Hebrew calendar. And for the past 20 some odd years, I've been studying the Hebrew calendar and looking at prophetic timelines, both according to the Hebrew calendar and according to the Gregorian calendar. Now we know that the Gregorian calendar is a solar calendar. And we know that the Hebrew calendar is a lunar calendar. We know that prophetically in the word of God, that when you see the sun or God speaking through the sun, and just even when I say that, like God doesn't speak through the sun. Yes, he does. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that in the last days that there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the star. Well, that's just witchcraft. No, it's not. That's Jesus. Amen. It's, it, it, it really is King Jesus. And besides all that, when you see God speaking a word through the sun, he is typically speaking to natural people and he is typically speaking to the nations. When you see God speak a word through the moon, he tends to be speaking to his specific supernatural people and specifically to, um, to Israel. Now the sun is always seen as masculine and it talks about the sun comes out as a bridegroom moving through his circuit, right? the circle or, or the circuit or the ecliptic. And it passes through 12 constellations that we call signs. Now, before you freak out and say, man, you, you cannot be talking about signs in church. Well, Genesis chapter one, verse 14, the Bible says, then let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day for the night and let them be for what? Signs in seasons for days and for years. The reason God created the constellations and placed them in a pattern that the sun would actually pass through was he created them first and foremost to be prophetic pictures for us. Because the whole story of redemption is actually seen in the heavens. Shameless plug for my book, Looking Up. Okay. <laughs> so Hebrews chapter one, verse one, it says, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets declares that God speaks at different times in different ways. And even when God shows up at one time, he doesn't have, he doesn't speak the same exact word to everybody. As a matter of fact, in the book of Revelation, when Jesus shows up in chapter one and chapter two and chapter three, right before we get to chapter four, which is the door being opened in heaven and hearing a voice saying, come up here, that which is the rapture of the church, right? Behold, I stand at the door and I knock and if any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him. What is that? It's the marriage supper of the lamb. If you don't hear the voice of God, you will miss the rapture. And if you don't have a value for his voice, you'll be one of the foolish virgins instead of one. Oh, see, y'all don't like that. Come on. Now, listen, man, I got a huge value for the voice of God. You have a huge value for the voice of King Jesus. We always think that, you know, folks mixing the, missing the rapture is that's ungodly people. No, 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 no. We're talking about godly people who are like, yeah, I don't, I'm not really into Jesus being the answer for everything. Jesus is the answer for absolutely everything. And people that are watchful are people that are looking for the return of King Jesus because they, they're happy for Jesus to show up. They're happy for Jesus to show up. If, if you live a lifestyle of privately asking Jesus to be made manifest in every single part of your life, you'll have no problem asking Jesus to be manifest in every single part of the world. It's when you got the Jesus part of your life and the other part of your life that there's a malfunction with that. We're afraid that God's going to come in and, and uh, interrupt something cool that we don't invite God in on. That's just craziness, isn't it? Isn't that just craziness? So we know that Jesus is the answer, and we know that God speaks at different times in different ways, and when he shows up, he has a specific word for the specific time that he's there for the specific people that he's actually talking to. And we know that we must discern those things. There's actually a tribal anointing 
that is listed in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, and of the children of Issachar who were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were about 200 and all their brethren were under their command. And what that literally means is whenever King David got ready to command his tens of thousands into battle, he actually turned for the counsel of only 200 people and said, what is God's word for this moment? You see, that's a different mentality. That's a very, very relational kingdom mentality that's not religious at all because religion only worries about what God used to do a long, long time ago, and then they fight for what no longer matters. And they draw huge lines in the sand for something that God did a long, long, long time ago, and they don't have a clue what God Almighty is doing today. Tell the person next to you, tell them, say, tell them, say, that ain't you and that ain't me. Tell them that. No, that's not us. So there's actually a tribal anointing, and I like to study the different tribal anointings. You know, Judah is all about a tribal of anointing, a tribal anointing of praise. And I, I'm about to go through all those, and I don't need to do that. But I do want to say that there is a such thing as a tribal anointing of Issachar where you can learn discernment of how do I move at this time? What is God speaking at this time? And let me tell you about tribal anointings. It has to do with who you do life with. It has to do with who you surround yourself with. It has to do with who do you receive counsel from. It has, listen, if, if you hang around a bunch of knuckleheads 24 hours a day, you just have the knucklehead anointing. That's all you're going to have. <laughs> you were probably born with that. You don't even need those people for that. But you know what, man? I think that if you want to have a prophetic anointing and if you want to walk in the in a, in a, you, you need to find a prophetic community. Here's, here's a good example of that. You know, how many, how many of you guys want to be a giant slayer? I want to be a giant slayer. I sure do, man. I want to be a giant slayer. Biblically, the only people you find that ever slay giants are personal friends with King David. You got to hang out with David. You got to hang out with giant slayers in order to receive that kind of a tribal anointing. Amen. Well, the sons of Issachar declares a supernatural anointing that we can discern the times that we know what we're supposed to do in this hour. So when it comes to the Hebrew calendar, we're entering into Rosh Hashanah. That happens actually sun, sunset next Sunday, a week from today. And Rosh Hashanah is the Feast of Trumpets. And Rosh Hashanah, out of all the feasts, out of all seven of the feasts that God Almighty gave to Israel, and they are kingdom things. I want you to understand that the Jews are the stewards of these things, and they've done a great job of stewarding it. But you need to understand that these feasts belong to all of us. That even after Jesus comes back, we still keep the feasts. Do you guys know that? It's, it's biblical. And so when you look at Rosh Hashanah, and you look over at it, and you go, what is that all about? It's the Feast of Trumpets. And it is the feast that no man knows the day or the hour of. And you're like, well, what is that all about? The only way that you can know when it is Rosh Hashanah is when the watchers are out looking for that sliver of the moon. And when the tiny silver sliver of the moon is seen by the watchers, they declare it and they light a fire and then a trumpet is blown. And then there are a hundred trumpets that are blown, and at the last trump, there is a long resounding one, and then everybody shouts. There's a mighty shout at the last trump during the time that no man knows the day or the hour of. Does that sound like any kind of huge event? Yes, the return of King Jesus who shows up with a mighty shout at the last trump. Uh, Pastor Troy, are you telling me that you think Jesus is coming back on Rosh Hashanah? I know for a fact he's coming back on Rosh Hashanah. But Pastor Troy, no man knows the day or the hour. I know. <laughs> you got to be watchful or you'll miss it. Come on, church. <laughs> Come on. It's good stuff. Besides that, I, I don't, you're like, man, that's just witchcraft. You start telling me that you think you know when Jesus is coming back. Here's what I do know, okay? Nobody knows the day or the hour. And you know why? Because the world's round, hillbilly. <laughs> and on any given day, there's 24 different hours going on and two different days going on. Every single moment on the planet Earth, okay? You're like, I must have missed that in school. I didn't realize that. <laughs> so I'm just saying... If Jesus shows up next week, I told you so. 
Hallelujah. Like, you really think he can come back next week? I say Jesus can come back right now, and I say Hosanna. I say Maranatha. I say come quickly, King Jesus. So the first of Tishri, the Jewish New Year, it falls on sunset, September the 29th, and we're moving into a new Hebrew year on the Hebrew calendar, 5780. Now, I like to look at numbers sometimes. And if I was just going to look at this, and if I was going to say, what is God speaking through the numbers five, seven, eight, and zero? What is God Almighty speaking through that? We know that five represents grace, right? We know that seven is perfection of the spirit or manifest spirit when God makes things perfect or takes things all the way by the spirit of the living God. And we know that eight represents new beginnings. If you don't get anything else, out of this sermon today, if you don't get anything else out of my message and all you hear is this, hear this. You are moving into a supernatural time of God-given ability, grace, for the Spirit of the living God to be made manifest for you to walk in new beginnings, thus says the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's something that I want to get in alignment with. Now look, I know that David is the eighth son of Jesse. I know that, I know that <laughs> David had his debacle with Bathsheba, which, which Bathsheba literally means daughter number seven. So son number eight, anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I also know, guys, that there are eight women prophets in the Bible, Miriam and Deborah and Huldah and Anna and the four virgin daughters of Philip in Acts chapter 21. And I believe with all my heart, friends, that this is a prophetic time of the voice of women rising up within the body of Jesus. Ladies, do not let anybody silence you. It is very important that your voice is heard in the day that all of us are living in. There is a demonic voice of women today that needs to be answered by the women of King Jesus. Do not remain silent. I will also say this too, that there are eight additional apostles other than the original 12 that are listed within the Bible. I think that this is, there's a huge return and revival of apostolic ministry within the body of Christ that has taken place even as we speak. We'll talk more about that on, on some other day. But one of my favorite eights is Philippians 4, 8, which is like 888, which is Jesus, right? Philippians 4, 8. And whenever we look at that, it says that there are eight things that God tells us to think on. And the very first one is whatsoever things are true. And there's eight of those things. You know, things true are things that are real. And in the midst of all of the fake news that you and I are dealing with, and I'm not just talking about the news media, I'm talking about the emotional battles that you and I fight that aren't even real. Giants are real and they gotta be slain, but dragons are bonus, they're bogus. Dragons are ridiculous, and you don't need to be a dragon slayer. You need to be a giant slayer. And I just want to just encourage you that many times, guys, you know, everybody's scared to death of a dragon. Ain't nobody ever seen one. Everybody knows what a giant is. Everybody knows what a dragon is. And I think a lot of times, guys, we're just so worn out on battles that are not real in the what ifs of life that we have no strength to, buy, to fight the real battles that all of us need to fight. Whatsoever things, the Bible says, and there's eight of those. But friends, it's not just eight, it's actually 80. 80 is where the big thing is this year. And there's a big prophetic move from the decade of the 70s into the decade of the 80s that I'm just barely going to be able to get in today. But if we're looking at 5-7 and then the 80s instead of the 5-7 in the 70s, you know, 5771, 5772, right, that whole thing. Now we're moving into 578 zero, which means for the next 10 years, there is a shift from what the 70s represent into what the 80s represent. Now, in order to understand what the 70s represent prophetically and what the 80s represent prophetically, then you have to look at the Hebrew language just a little bit. Because Hebrew letters, and there's 22 Hebrew letters within the Hebrew alphabet, just to make sure that this is a little bit difficult which our Jewish brothers and sisters love to do. Like, they're like, hey, I know, let's have several different New Year's. You know they do that, right? 
Every time I preach on this, I get all kinds of hate mail. Are you big knucklehead? That ain't when the New Year's is. No, you're the knucklehead. They have four. How many of you guys like that, by the way? I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. So they're just like, ha ha, you can't figure it out. Okay. Just exactly like that with the Hebrew alphabet, every single letter has three different values. They have a phonic sound, a numerical value, and they also have a prophetic picture. A phonic sound is pretty easy. A is an apple, right? Right? And the phonic sound. But they also have a numerical value. I want to show you guys um, a, a prophetic letters graphic that has all the numerical values that's next to it. And I want you guys to notice that it doesn't start from left to right as we read. It starts from right to left. And that might take you a second to catch like, what, what the heck? Well, it's very simple. Everybody east of Jerusalem reads from right to left. Everybody west or left of Jerusalem reads from left to right. So that no matter where, no matter where you're at or what you're reading, you're always looking back to Jerusalem for Jesus to come back. Okay, so, so whenever we look at this, we can see that their letter that would indicate the letter A in our language has a value of one, and then the bet has a two, and then the next one, you know, has three, and it goes up to 10, and then from 10, it goes from 10, 20, 30, 40, up to 100, and then the last four Hebrew letters go 100, 200, 300, and 400, right? The reason why, like, well, I don't understand why they don't just have digits or why they don't just have numerals. Well, that's something that we do on our side of the world, which is one angle, Two angles in it means two angles. Three angles in it means three angles. Four has four angles in it. Five, if you do it the right way. Seven with a hashtag has seven. How many angles is this, guys? Zero, right? There's no angles in that. So that's how we came up with that. Man, our Jewish brothers and sisters are like, eh, not so much. They're just like, hey, you know what? We already got letters. We can just do this. We're, you know, we're pretty smart. We can keep up with this. We don't need to be confused with a whole other thing to learn. We're just going to stick with this. So what that means is every single Hebrew word is also a number. Every single Hebrew word is also a number. And every single Hebrew scripture is also a number. It's amazing, isn't it? But there's a whole other layer of revelation on this as well. Every single Hebrew letter is not only a number, but it's also a prophetic picture. Let me show you this one. Like how you make the symbol of what is their A actually looks like a bull's head. So it's the head of the year or it's the A, it's the beginning, right? And then B looks like a tent and it's the prophetic picture of a house or a tent. And then you can go on with that. Okay. Well, the, the letter that has a value of 70, and remember guys, we're moving from the 70s into the 80s. So we're not just talking about the 70s, we're talking about the letter that represents the 70s. The letter that represents the 70s is an ayn, and it has eyes on it, and it represents an eye, which means the 70s was all about seeing something, okay? Perceiving something, having vision for something. But now we're moving into the letter pay, and pay is the symbol of a mouth. So we're moving from a time of seeing and discerning into a time of tasting and experiencing. Are you, are you tracking with me? So guys, we're moving from seeing unto tasting. We're moving from revelation into experience. We're moving from understanding into declaration, from learning about it to actually having the authority to speak it. Guys, the scribes and the Pharisees and folks who couldn't see, they could, they could preach on the scriptures, but when Jesus spoke, he spoke as one that has authority. That's the difference between the eyes and the mouth. Moses saw the promised land, but Joshua tasted the fruit of it. There's a way that you can only see through your mouth by tasting and personal experience. That's why the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. There's a way that you can only perceive and understand that is through personal experience. This is not just about reading about it. This is not about seeing it far off. God Almighty is moving you into a prophetic time and hour where you actually live what you've always saw and thought it was a long ways off, and it's time for you to start walking in those things. Five, seven, eighty. Pays the seventeenth letter, and seventeen represents overcoming victory. There's 17 promises for him that overcomes within the book of Revelation. 17 means overcoming victory. 
But this whole thing of 80, friends, when I look at this thing, I'm just so blown away because Moses was 80 whenever he led the Jews out of Egypt. This is a year in a season of huge deliverance for you. If there's any slavery in your life, let chains come off because you speak. Let my people go. And you line up your mouth with that. I'm so remembering that David's kindness for supplying him, and, and I want to just stop and just tell you, man, I'm getting a lot of feedback up here, my brother, and just, just bring it down, right on. I'm so remembering David's kindness in 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 32, where he says, okay, because you've been kind and because you've done the thing that I'm asked, he tells this 80-year-old man, I'm going to repay you for that. I'm going to repay you for that. I just believe with all my heart. Do you remember, guys, we actually read the scripture in Matthew chapter 25 where Jesus says, I take it personal how you do things. Where the Lord says, the Lord will repay. This is a season for you to enter into that. I could talk about some other 80s, but let me, let me go to this one because this is a really big deal. Last year, friends, we called the year 5779, we called that a golden year. Because on the atomic scale, the number 79 was a number that represented gold. How many of you guys remember that word, right? Okay, number 80 on the atomic scale is mercury. And mercury is quicksilver. Let me tell you why that's a big deal. Number one, it has 80 protons and it has 80 neutrons in it. It's 80, 80, 80. 888 is King Jesus, guys. All right? It's the numerical value of the name Jesus is 888. Now, when I look at this and when I see this, I'm blown away because when I look at Quicksilver, I'm hearing two prophetic words within that. The quickening and silver, which is redemption. This is a huge year of the quickening of the Lord. What is the quickening of the Lord? It's where, again, you read about it and then God quickens you and then it becomes a part of your life. It's literally the difference between seeing and tasting. It's the difference between the eyes and the mouth. The quickening of the Holy Spirit is where you have not been, where you have not been alive unto something that God is declaring. Boom! Then you become alive unto it. As when I see silver, I see redemption. And I'm just saying that if we look at the term that literally quicksilver and mercury literally means 80, and this is the time of us moving into this 80, and there's 80 protons and 80 neutrons into it, I'm saying I'm claiming that word over my life in Jesus' name, and I'm lining up my mouth, and I'm saying, let it be as the Lord has spoken unto me, as Mama Mary said. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. I want to also say this too, that quicksilver is famous, or mercury is famous for being what is in a thermometer because it melts at room temperature. I, I think that this is a huge year for you carrying the spirit of the living God and setting the temperature for every single place you go. That it not being up to the devil that works, you know, works with you, it not being up to the devil that you have to hang around with or the, 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 just the rant of the mob of your own family or whatever that is, that you don't have to let that set the tone. Amen? But you carry the presence of the living God and that the voice of the accuser is squashed this year. And you watch, I want you to pay attention to how God Almighty shows you how to walk in authority in three different areas, environment, atmosphere, and culture. Environment is your physical surroundings. It has to do with, does your, does your house and your family look more like heaven than it, than it looks like hell? Amen? Atmosphere is the supernatural within all that and how you carry the presence of God within that. And then culture is how you relate to other people. I want you to think about all the warfare that's going on right now with the environment. Think about all the warfare that's going on right now concerning the atmospheres of things. I want you to think about all the warfare, the culture warfare that has taken place. Let the people of King Jesus see victory in all three of these areas because of how you carry the presence of, of King Jesus. I'm going to ask the band to come up here, and I'm going to close by saying this. Psalms chapter 81 verse 10 says, I am God your Lord who lifted you out of Egypt. Widen your mouth and I will fill it. I will fill it. Widen your mouth and I will fill it. I think that we need to be prepared this year to have the presence of God in all of our mouths. In what we experience, in what we taste, and how we receive the things of the world, 
but also in what we speak, in what we declare, and what we have to say about things. I want to show you this because this is a really big deal. Five plus seven plus eight plus zero equals 20 as we move into the year 2020 and the calendars converge. There's a huge convergence of those numbers this year. So what does that mean? It means this, that the year 5780 is a year of quickening and redemption. Somebody say amen to that. The year 5780 is a year of tasting what we have prophetically seen in the past, tasting what we have prophetically seen in the past. And the year 5780 is a year of heaven invading our earth through the word God has spoken and the declarations that we make. Guys, let's give King Jesus a great big praise in the house. Hallelujah. I want to ask everybody to stand up if you would. So everybody repeat after me. Say, I declare in Jesus' name. My mouth is ready to taste and see that God is good. I am in alignment for my assignment. Heaven is invading my earth. My words are God's words. My heart is God's heart. This is a valuable time for me. My environment, my atmosphere, the culture of all that I steward is ruled by the Spirit of Jesus. Let it be as you have spoken unto me in Jesus' name. Amen.